Hey, Ag Teacher Thoughts coming at you with another video. This one is going to be a little bit about houseplant care. So I know, I know, I am the outdoor green, outdoor plant person and the greenhouse person. But in our house, there are a lot of houseplants. Uh, they are my wife's projects. They are her babies. Uh, occasionally, I come along and, and help them out and help them survive. Uh, so we're going to talk about some do's and don'ts about houseplants. Now, I would say, yeah, I come from the greenhouse nurseryman background. My wife comes from farm field background, um, and houseplants are a, a new thing, kind of, kind of like uh, COVID era ish. Uh, they became a passion for her, and uh, our new home here in Idaho has a lot of windows, so uh, every couple of weeks there seems to be a new houseplant arriving. But let's talk about some of the things that we've got going on here. Uh, she's grimacing at me from the couch across the room. Uh, I will leave Mrs. Ag Teacher thoughts out of this video, but we'll talk about some of the houseplant sins and how we can rectify those. So let's talk about a real quick one right here. So it is post Christmas and this is probably one of the most common plants that folks start growing indoors. This is a poinsettia and this is a poor poinsettia that is on his last legs. Uh, he got forgotten with some water, and poinsettias don't like to wilt. They just like to drop all their leaves and die. But one of the sins about poinsettias is these mylar wrappers, and they are really good at holding in moisture. In fact, if you can hear that spilling over, they don't let any water out, and that will pond up in the bottom of those wrappers, right? So we've got all of that water here. So here we have this poor plant that was struggling from lack of water, and now it has too much water, and it'll actually cause a condition called Fisarium root rot, where the roots don't get enough oxygen in there, and there's too much moisture, and they will actually die. So what we're going to do on this guy is we're going to go ahead and leave him out of that foil wrapper. Um, it will recover. Believe it or not, it will recover. There is a bud right there. So that is a bud that's going to activate. So this is going to stop dying there, and this will activate. And by summer, this will be a nice thriving plant as long as we don't leave him in dishes where they'll sit in water. Okay, so that's one. Okay, and that's, that's, that's these foil wrappers. Get rid of those. Get rid of those. Now let's look and see what else we've got going on. Okay, is there another one? Let's come up here. Here we have another poinsettia. Again, same deal. Dried out a lot. And he's sitting in a plate. Can you see that water? That water there, that is also a no-no. So we want to make sure that we take him here. And I understand that they just got their water uh, just a little bit ago. So... I'm going to take him in here and take that plate out. Okay, he's still got a leaf. He's still going to live. So we'll get that out of the way. And I'm going to put these in this container just to allow them some time to have that extra water drip out. See how much is coming out of there? We don't want that. Uh, this soil that they grow, uh, the poinsettias in, is almost, it's almost completely peat moss. And peat moss love, loves, absolutely loves to hold water in it. Uh, there's no perlite in here. It's just straight peat. Uh, so it's a really, really wet soil to begin with. Uh, and there's a reason they do that. Uh, this is kind of a devious reason. Once the poinsettia uh, leaves the greenhouse, they may actually not get watered again until they go into your home. So they use a really thick, heavy peat soil that holds a lot of moisture so that plant doesn't dry out during transportation. So with these, we've got to be really, really careful that we don't accidentally uh, let those hold too much water. Now, there are some other things we can do. We can come in and we can take some of these uh, plastic trays like this one here. So there's a little bit of water, but you see where it's got space for it to, to move away and it's got some space where it can be away from the plant. We just need to make sure that we collect all that and we make sure that it doesn't sit in there and then we can place this guy back. Okay, so this is this is a geranium cutting. Um, it's, it's still January here. Oh, wait, no, it's February 1st, but it's still real cold. So these are uh, 
they're living vicariously uh, through an artificial sun. But uh, this one's doing okay. We just need to get a few more of these for our poinsettias. Again, any questions, drop them in the comments. Hope you learned something today. Ag Teacher Thoughts out.